All right. Welcome back, everyone, for another deep dive. Yeah, great to be back. Last time, we were messing around with Kinter and MySQL. Yeah. Getting him connected, showing some records, that kind of thing. Right. Uh, if you missed it, you know, the link's down below. Go check that out first. But yeah, definitely. today, Thanks. we're going to build on that, right? Absolutely. We're going to look at how to display specific records. That's right. Based on what the user wants to see. Exactly. So instead of just kind of dumping everything from the database. Right, yeah. We're giving the user a way to really pinpoint what they need. So it's like when you're on like, you know, Amazon or something. Yeah. And yeah. you're looking for a specific product. Exactly. Or if you're a doctor. Yeah. And you need to look up a patient's medical history. Okay, so how do we how do we even approach this? Well, we're going to use a library. It's called mycql.connector. Right. Yeah, we talked about that last time. You remember that? I remember that. All so right. that's going to help us connect to the database. And then we're going to use some teacher uh, to create, you know, yeah. the user interface. Right, right, to get that input. Exactly. So we'll have an entry box, you know, yeah. for the user to type in what they're looking for, a button right. to initiate the search, and then a label to display the result. And then there's a, there's a function here called My Details. You got it. I think that's doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Yeah, absolutely. That function takes what the user types in, okay, like a customer ID or something, uh -huh. and it uses that to fetch the matching record from the database. But but what if someone tries to be, you know, funny and they type in like right. like a word or some kind of symbol? You're thinking like a programmer. You're already ahead of the game. Okay. That's where input validation comes in. Okay. So the code actually checks to make sure that what the user typed in okay. is actually an integer, which is, you know, uh, just a whole number, basically. Right, right. And that helps prevent errors. And it actually, it helps with security, too. Security? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like, how? Imagine if somebody tried to, like, inject malicious code into the database. Oh, right. Through that input field. So by making sure it's an integer, we're really limiting okay. the risk of something like that happening. So it's like, you know, it's like double checking everything. Exactly. Making sure nothing, you know, weird's going on. It's like having a bouncer at the door of your database, making sure everyone who enters has, you it's know, a, file. a valid ID. Makes sense. Yeah. But is there only one way to connect to a database? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Oh, you're curious. I am. Well, you're in luck because there is another method worth mentioning. Okay. It's called Squall Alchemy. Squall Alchemy. Yeah, think of it as like a more sophisticated way okay. to interact with your database. Sophisticated in what sense? Well, for one, it tends to produce cleaner, more readable code. Okay. Especially, you know, as your product gets larger and more complex. Right. Squalkme uses what are called placeholders for values, which makes it easier to see, like, what's going on. Oh, okay. It's like the difference between, like, writing a rough draft and a polished final essay. I see. So you got your mysql.connector, right. which is your workhorse. You're a trusty workhorse. And then you got Squalkamy. It's your it's your finely tuned sports car. Okay. Both get you where you need to go. So it but runs uh, a little a little smoother. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, more high end. Although, you know, Square Alchemy might be a bit more challenging for beginners to grasp at first. Okay. But regardless of which method you choose, you know, the, yeah. the real the real challenge is presenting the data to the user right in a way that's both clear and informative yeah and that's where this fantastic tool called tree view comes in tree view tree view yeah it's not like a family tree for data or anything like that okay right. but uh think of it more like viewing your search results in a spreadsheet okay with columns and rows right so you can see everything nicely laid out so instead of just like one long string of of text yeah you get this nice table you got it with columns and rows yeah and here's the cool part. Okay. Tree view automatically creates those column headers. Oh, wow. Based on the data coming back from the database. So it's flexible. It's incredibly flexible, yeah. So if I'm searching for a customer record, yeah. I might see, you know, name, ID. Exactly. Purchase history, okay. that kind of stuff. Makes sense. So it's really about making it clear yeah. and intuitive for the user. What about uh what about, you know, when things go wrong? Ah. Uh. Like, you know, like a database error or yeah, right. the user enters the wrong information. You're talking about error handling. Yeah. yeah. Super uh -huh. important, right? Right. You want your code to be robust enough to handle these unexpected situations right. without just crashing. Yeah, you don't want the whole thing to just fall apart. You know? Yeah, exactly. And I see in this code we got these try accept blocks. Yeah, those are like your safety nets. Catching those potential errors before they cause a major problem. So even if, like, you know, someone accidentally types in 
you know, a letter instead of a number. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to just blow up. Exactly. The try accept block will catch that error. Okay. And it can even display a helpful message to the user. Oh, right. Like, hey, you know, you need to enter a number here. Right, right. Because we're really about creating that smooth, yeah. user-friendly experience. I never realized how many pieces have to come together to make something like this work. It is, yeah. Kind of mind-blowing. It's quite a process. From connecting to the database to handling errors yeah. to, you know, presenting the data. Absolutely. It's a lot. But that's what makes coding so fascinating. You know, you can yeah. break down this complex problem right. into smaller, more manageable pieces. Right. And then build something really powerful and useful. Well, and speaking of powerful and useful, what's up next time? Oh, next time we're diving into a really interesting challenge. We're going to be generating unique reference numbers, okay. like ticket numbers for customer support or mm. order IDs for, you know, e-commerce, uh -huh. that sort of thing. So I'm guessing today's date, mm -hmm. which is 2024-1206. That's right. For those listening in the future, right. today's date is going to play a big role in this. Okay, awesome. We're going to be combining today's date with a unique identifier right. to create this really practical, robust system. So if you want to learn how to create those unique reference numbers, yes. stick around for the next episode. Absolutely. And uh, you know, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. Yeah. We'll be back with more deep dives into the world of coding. Mm, sounds good. Looking forward to it. You know, it's really interesting when you think about it. What's that? How all these like seemingly simple features right. actually involve like a ton of code. Yeah, it's kind of like those, uh, you know, behind the scenes things where right. they show you how a special effect is made. Right. Yeah, exactly. And you realize, wow, there's so much, so much work that goes into it yeah. for something that's on screen for like two seconds. And like in filmmaking, you know, attention to detail is really important in coding too. Right. I mean, take error handling, for example. Yeah. Yeah. We touched on that a little bit before. Right. But it's worth like digging a little deeper, I think. Yeah, I'm starting to see how important that is. It is. To make sure the program doesn't just, like, crash and burn. Exactly. When something goes wrong. And the way these, like, the tri blocks are <laughs> nested within each other, it's actually really clever. Oh, okay. So you have, like, one layer checking for valid integer input. Okay. And then within that, uh -huh. another layer that's, like, handling potential database errors. So it's like it's like multiple layers of protection. Exactly. Like multiple layers of security. See, but that first check, like, fails. Yeah. It doesn't even try to connect to the database. Exactly. It prevents this, like, cascade of errors. Yeah. And it just makes the code more efficient. So it's like a gatekeeper, basically. Exactly. Only lets the right people. To land. the next stair. Okay. And then if everything checks out. Yeah. Then it goes and fetches the data. That's right. And displays it all nice and neat. In that in that tree view format we talked about. With the columns and rows. Exactly. Yeah. So it's all about, you know, right. creating this smooth, right. user friendly experience. Even if behind the scenes. If, yeah. Stuff's going crazy. Things are things are a little chaotic, yeah. And, and you know, when you think about just how much data is out there these days. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's mind-boggling. It is it is truly mind-boggling. Right. Like, just from online shopping to, yeah. you know, social media. We to sensor data. And yeah. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. Yeah. And with all that data, like, right. being able to find what you need. It's more important than ever. Is so important. Yeah. So, I, I mean. So, these techniques we're talking about, you yeah. know, they're really crucial. Yeah. It's not just about, like. It's not just about storing the data. Storing it. It's about being able to access it. Right. Analyze it. And get something useful out of it. Exactly. Extract meaningful insights from it. It's like having a map. Yeah. And a compass. In this in, in this vast wilderness of information. Exactly. Without them, you're just lost. Right. Yeah. And these skills are, you know, yeah. they're becoming so valuable across mm -hmm. all sorts of fields, I mean. Right. Like, it doesn't matter if you're in business or... Business, healthcare, science. Healthcare, yeah. I mean, anything, you know, that's data-driven. Right. Knowing how to work with databases is, it's essential. So if you're listening to this... Yeah. And you're just getting started with coding... This is definitely something to invest your time in. This is a good one to learn. It is. It is. Yeah. And the cool thing is... <sighs> There's so many resources out there. There are, yeah. To help you learn this stuff. Absolutely. And we'll we'll be sure to include some helpful links right. in the show notes. So I think uh, in this deep dive, yeah. we've covered quite a bit. We have. We've looked at connecting to a database. Right. You know, 
fetching specific records. Air handling. Air handling and presenting presenting it nicely. Yes. Uh, it's been uh, quite a ride. It has, but we've really we've only just scratched the surface. Right. There's so much more to explore in this whole world of databases and databases and data manipulation. Yeah. yeah. But hopefully this is giving you a good taste yeah. of what's possible. Definitely has for me. Good. I'm already thinking about like how I can apply this to Oh, that's great. some of my own stuff. I love to hear that. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. You know, coding is all about creativity and problem solving. Once no. you understand these like right. fundamental concept, you can really start to build amazing things. And speaking of amazing things, yes. what's coming up next? Next time, we're going to tackle this challenge that combines like okay. date manipulation. Okay. And unique ID generation. Right. We're going to be creating those unique reference numbers. Right, right. Yeah. Like the ones we talked about earlier, you know, like on the order confirmations and things like that. Exactly. For, you know, support tickets, yeah. order confirmations, that sort of thing. So we're going to use today's date. You got it. 2024 1206. That's right. For those listening in the future. We're going to combine that with a unique identifier right. to create this system. That's practical and robust. That's practical. And yeah, it's robust. Okay. It's a great example of how you can combine these like seemingly simple concepts right. to create something really powerful. Awesome. I can't wait to see how that works. I'm excited for it. So if you want to learn how to generate those unique reference numbers, join us for the next episode. Be sure to tune in for the next deep dive. We'll break down the code. Yeah. Step by step. Awesome. Show you how to create your own right. unique reference number generator. Sounds good. You know, it's kind of amazing when you stop and think about it. That's that. It. How much we depend on these like unique yeah. IDs. Yeah. They're everywhere online. They really are. Yeah. Think about like every time you buy something online, right. book a flight, or even just send an email. Yeah. There are all these unique IDs working behind the scenes. It's like a secret code yeah. to keep everything running smoothly. Exactly. And as we move toward this, you know, even more connected world with yeah. more devices, more data than ever, yeah. these IDs become even more important. So learning how to generate these things. Right. It's like the secret handshake. Yeah, I like that. Of the digital age, right? It's a good analogy. And it's not as complicated as you might think right. with a little bit of code. Right. We can combine today's date with a unique identifier to create this really practical and robust system. And that's what we'll be looking at. Exactly. In the next episode. Yes. We're gonna break it down step by step. <laughs> that's right. Show you how to create your own. Your very own unique reference number generator. So if you wanna learn how to do that. Join us next time. Make sure you come back for the next deep dive. We'll be back with more insights and explanations yeah. and more coding adventures. Awesome. And if you enjoyed this episode, yeah, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And leave us a review. Right. Helps other people find this show. Absolutely. And uh, share it with your friends. Yeah. Spread the word. If you know anyone who's interested in learning about coding and databases. Exactly. All right. Well, until next time. Happy coding. Happy coding, everyone. <laughs>